Have you ever used a power miter saw to cut small pieces of wood? Well, if you have, you know how dangerous it can be, not only for your fingers, but if you do manage to make the cut, the pieces of wood tend to fly away. Well, today we're gonna to build a simple three board miter box that you can use on your workbench to make cross cuts and miters safely with your handsaw. Okay, let's get started. Okay, you're gonna need three boards for this project. All of my boards are three quarter inches thick. I have a small one that's one and a quarter inches wide, then another one that's two and a quarter inches wide, and then another one that's four inches wide. These measurements are not critical, but it's just how I built mine. I'm also using a stop block on my miter saw to make sure all the boards are cut at the same length. The boards I'm cutting here are 13 inches long, but yours can be whatever size you need. Okay, well the large piece is going to be the base of the, the miter box, then the medium piece is going to be the back where the slots go, and then the small piece is going to act as a bench hook to add support when you're cutting. Clamp the medium sized piece next to your bench, then you're going to need a pencil or a marking knife, either one will work. You'll need a combination square or a speed square. And you also need the saw that you're going to use in the miter box. Here I'm just using a dovetail saw. Next you want to mark a 45 degree angle on the top, a 90 degree, and then a 45 degree the opposite way. And this is where your saw curves are going to go in the back. Here I'm just using a knife to make a curve for the saw to follow. Now I use the combination square as a guide to keep my saw at 45 degrees. I'm just gonna make a starting cut at the top. One in each of those marks. Okay, now you're gonna take your marking knife or your pencil and transfer those lines down the front and back of the back piece. You wanna make sure that the saw follows these marks. Then I'm using a chisel to widen those to make a kerf for the saw to follow. So when the saw is cutting through the wood, it'll fall into that groove and stay straight for you. Just a small little notch. Now begin to saw down the kerf, making sure your saw stays straight. I relax my saw arm and just let the saw fall down into the grooves. I use my thumb on my left hand as a guide. Okay, now all the grooves have been cut. Now it's time to assemble the project. Well, the back is gonna go flush up against the base, and then the smaller piece is gonna be attached to the bottom. I'm gonna use some glue first. Then it gets tacked on with some brads to hold it in place. Now some glue for the 
bench hook at the bottom. I'm also going to use some brads to hold that in place. Now to add extra support, I'm going to pre-drill for some screws, counter sink them. I'm using one and a quarter inch drywall screws. You want it to be pretty sturdy when you're sawing so it doesn't fall apart on you. Okay, well now it's finally assembled. You place it up against your bench to use it. If you want to, you can add some clamps to add extra support when you're cutting. This just helps the miter saw box from moving around on you. Okay, I'm gonna try it out. Just try out the 90 degree. Works good. The nice thing also about this box is since you used your saw to make the curse, it gives you a, a reference point to make your cuts. So if you have a mark, you can line it up exactly where, where the saw is going to go. Sort of a zero clearance idea. Here's the 45 degree miters. Well, I hope you like today's project. I think it's going to keep you a lot safer in the workshop. I use mine all the time for cutting small parts and pieces. Well, I hope you like this video and we'll see you next time.